Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas, where it's a nice comfy one degree below freezing and that's not taking wind chill into account, which I assure you is very considerable. Tonight's exercise is a field test of the Sofern SC-13. I want to thank Sofern for sending me this light and making the review possible. Well, yeah, it really is that small. In fact, when I first took it out of the box, I was a little concerned about how I would hold it, but you can see it has just a bit of an hourglass shape there. Very nice knurling, good texturing along the bottom here, so it, you can really get a, a very nice, comfortable, secure hold. We're gonna find out how well that holds up in the uh, cold weather tonight. Charging port cover and switch on opposite sides. Mag base, and you do get a one-way clip. I'm not going to uh, use that tonight. I'm just gonna carry it free in a pocket, see how it goes. In terms of operation, if I said O-Light, I could probably stop right here. You've probably seen this before. Click to turn on, click to turn off. Press and hold to cycle through low, medium, high. You have direct to moonlight from off. Double click to turbo, click to return to where you were. So simple, even a bozo like me can do it. The only uh, thing I probably want to mention there is that while you do ha technically have strobe, you have to go to strobe from turbo. So that's just a little something something to think about in the event that strobe is important to you. Well, I know you're not here to listen to me. You want to see the field test. And given the environment tonight, I want to get up and start moving. With regard to environment, in addition to temperature, we're going to have about a three-quarter moon out tonight. It's going to be very bright out there. Clear night. Um, I expect there to be you know, the usual amount of light pollution from the surrounding city on top of the moonlight. It's going to be a very challenging test for a small light like this, but small light, it's supposed to have a big punch at the top end. Well, you know what I always say, let's get out there in the preserve and find out exactly what it can do. So I'm operating with uh, light gloves on tonight. That's going to be uh, somewhat challenging for a light this small. I'm at the bridge where I normally do output level test in low. And so we go out to look over the creek. Medium. And let's move up. There is high. Maximum line of sight is uh, well over 40 yards this time of year. And there's the double click into uh, turbo. You can see you have pretty generous peripheral illumination. And then we click and go back to high. I've done this close proximity search test a number of times. The scenario is that your kids were playing out here earlier, dropped something, now you have to come back and search for it, but you know pretty much the precise area that they dropped it, and it's a good test for lower output levels. I told a friend of mine about this test, and he said, well, hey, let's make it realistic. I want to go out to the playground, and I'm going to actually drop something. So I gave him a child's wristband that I've used in other tests. Now, we've got some ground rules, okay? We know where the kids are playing. This area, the 
swing set, and then there's another structure like this. Or that. Those are the only three places that it can be. But this is a realistic search. I'm in medium. This is the output level I was in when I last turned the light off. It has memory. Turn it back on. We're in medium. So it, it just seems to me, even on a bright night like tonight, this is perfectly for what would be a uh, much wider area search than I would normally do in this scenario. So I want to get good overlap. Let's start with this dark area right here. Okay, nothing. Let's move around. I really like the style of this beam for something this small and typical EDC style task. This is making the general search, I think, uh, fairly easy. I hope my so-called friend doesn't make me eat those words. No, no, that's not it. Piece of trash. All right, uh, looking like no go in the swing set area. This is the last place it could be around here. And down just a little low. I'm totally digging this output. Back under there. Oh man, he's making the search and rescue guy look pretty bad tonight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, there we go. Successful first exercise. I'd normally do a path following test here. The typical path I use, medium, would knock that out of the park. And tonight's theme seems to be challenge. So the challenge is, I got lost. I was on a late afternoon hike, and this is the only light I had. I, I really burnt the battery down. I'm worried about run time, so I'm in low, but I want to stay in low. Is low suitable for lighting up the path ahead of me, keeping me out of trouble, but it's a much more challenging path? All right, let's go find out. Got to watch out for the edge there. I'd end up in the creek. Okay, I got a dip here. Okay, looks like the trail goes this way. What little trail there is. Got hung up on some thorns. Well, if I'm correct, this should lead me back to the concrete path and back to civilization.
Nope, that's not it. Back to the creek. Could it be through there? That looks like dead end. Open terrain. Okay, wait a minute, here we go. Oh, look at that. Second successful test of the night. I made it back to civilization. I'm really starting to like this light. To me, this is the most uh, important test probably of the uh, entire evening. This is a high test, and I'm standing pretty far back. Usually I'm by that sign, but it's a good over 40 yards line of sight across that creek, entrance to the Outer Loop Trail. Oh, probably 15 to 18 to the sign, and then we run this around. Normally I'd stop about right in there, but I'm gonna keep on going. And under really trying conditions, I just want to see what we can get out of this high output level. Because this is your money mode, so to speak. This is probably what gives you the best combination of output, downrange viz, and runtime. Okay, now I can't see beyond that gap in the trees, so that's okay kind of what I expected. A much darker night I could, but I like to test under difficult circumstances. Run this around some more. And here we go in turbo. Beyond that uh, tree in front of me, we got a good 55, possibly 60 yards line of sight. Let's scan back and forth. And we're just going to let this burn down. Now, according to information in the user's guide, theoretically, the step down to high takes about two minutes. Of course, that's going to be temperature dependent, so we'll see what we get tonight. right at a minute. It seems like the step down curve is very gradual. and really notice it now. With gloves on on the outside, temperature, heat is not an issue at all. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down now that we've made it comfortably past two minutes. At the top of the observation tower, medium output level, that uh, 
mag tail cap works pretty decent. Let me turn my headlamp on. There you go, it's much easier to see that uh, it's pretty much parallel to ground level. Holding just fine. This is another creek area. I want to do one final medium high test. We're in medium right now. There is high. Yeah, these output levels in my mind really sell the light. There's actually a walkable path right back there. In fact, I think I'll go walk it. All right, here we go in medium. I mean, this is not just an around the house, around the parking lot light. You could, uh, you could do some serious night hiking with this light. Yeah, let's go right down here by the creek. In fact, I think I'll do my wrap up down here. I've never done that before. Now, if I were looking for a very small, mini, micro, EDC style light, something I could just put in a pocket and use for a number of typical EDC purposes and get out here in the bush. This would probably be right up there at the top of my list. I really hope you saw everything you wanted tonight. Uh, again, for me, the medium and high outputs are what really sell the light. Turbo's great for short blast. In fact, what I'm looking at right here, this light is begging for a cap light uh, impromptu headlamp style test. I take it out, clip it onto a cap, and uh, use it in lieu of a traditional headlamp. I think if I can fit that into the review schedule, I'd really like to do that test. If you'd like to see some other tests, leave a comment, let me know, I'll see what I can do. And on that happy note, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down for tonight. And as always, until the next review, thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching the video.